Today it got really, really crazy. We obviously have a massive Mario Wonder Nintendo Treehouse Live happening that we're going to be live streaming. So I got to get this video out to you quick. But before that, we have a ton of inside information from the producer and director of the series about how Mario Wonder came into being. And it's quite fascinating. So we got to get into that. We also have some other news happening with Pikmin 5. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pikmin 5 is happening, and we're going to talk about that. And then we have the ultimate rumor of rumors out there. We have actual potential details on Nintendo Switch 2, including on a key feature that has been heavily debated. Oh, man, I can't wait to get into this. So you know what? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like, and ringling that dingling so you're notified of all videos. Also, we're on a road to 150K. So you're really helping us out if you're not subscribed and decide to hit that little... What are you waiting? Subscribe now! <laughs> now our first story deals with Mario Wonder, so without further ado, let's just dive right in. Look, there's been a bunch of interviews going on. First up though, we needed to just remind you guys that there is a Nintendo Treehouse Live happening today at 4.30 Central Time. We will be live stream reacting to it, so we gotta get this video going. Mario Wonder's producer has been doing interviews with various outlets. Wait, who is the producer? None other than Takashi Tezuka, one of the top brass at Nintendo. His credits are in many games, but he really got his gaming director chops in the early days as director of Super Mario Bros, Lost Levels, co-director with Miyamoto, of The Legend of Zelda. He was the director of Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario World, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Super Mario All-Stars, and Yoshi's Island. However, beyond side projects, he hasn't really been heavily involved in a mainline Mario title since Galaxy 2. Let's just say he has helped guide some of the most memorable adventures in Mario's past, and arguably the best side-scrolling Mario games in existence. Talking to CNET, he dove into potentially wanting to change how online play works in video games. Naturally, there are downsides to online play. There are a lot of trolls and griefers and downright toxic players. And this is before we even get into voice chat, live lobbies. He stated, people have their own image of what online play might be. Maybe it's a little difficult or maybe it's a little scary. Then the game's director, Shiro Muri, stated, now Shiro Muri, by the way, also directed New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, the concept behind online play this time is really this idea of a casual connection. Being able to experience multiplayer game sessions as if you were playing a single player game. What I really wanted to do is create an online play experience that's entirely positive. In an interview with IGN, these two also explained that for the first time in a long time, Shigeru Miyamoto wasn't heavily involved like usual, but he was still involved in the right ways. With Wonder in particular, it wasn't like Mr. Miyamoto was in our hip pocket during this whole time, whispering in our ears or anything like that. Sometimes he would come by where we are working and look at things and give some opinions. He would generally observe things and make comments here and there. And even things that didn't seem like they were big comments, I have worked with Mr. Miyamoto a long time and really understand him. So I was able to get what he was implying or getting to and we would have conversations around those topics. Now, one interesting note that those two also said in an interview with Wired was, I wanted to prevent people from saying, we don't make that deadline. So that's why we didn't have one. We can't do it. Yeah, folks, that's right. There were zero development deadlines for Mario Wonder. This allowed the team to explore the game at their own pace and come up with a lot of ideas without the pressure. They asked the entire team for Wonder Flower effects, and here's a quote, regardless of what part of the game they are working on or how many years they've been working at Nintendo. This went on to net them over 2,000 ideas that they obviously had to whittle down for the game. One last note, as pointed out by Necro Felipe from Nintendo Universo, Mario Wonder does include the ability to turn off voice acting from the flowers, and he provided a screenshot in a different language for that. Really cool to see that that's included in, guys. I'm so stoked for Mario Wonder, but you know what? I don't need to say more because we have a Nintendo Treehouse Live that we're going to be reacting to later. And yeah, so let's just get on to our next story. And that is one that deals with these same interviews. Well, sort of. Actually, this one came from 
Eurogamer. Yeah, Eurogamer. Uh, because you know what? The producer of Mario Wonder, Takashi Tezuko, also worked a little bit on Pikmin 4, and so he was asked if we're gonna have to wait so long for Pikmin 5, which isn't even a confirmed game, and he had a response. I think that would be best as well. We'll try not to let everyone wait next time. This is a pseudo confirmation that we're even getting Pikmin 5, but also that we're not gonna have to wait as long. Also keep in mind, that means Pikmin 4 must have performed pretty well from a sales perspective, enough to satisfy Nintendo to green light another one. So Pikmin fans, we did it. We bought Pikmin 4, we enjoyed Pikmin 4, we loved Pikmin 4, the critics loved it, and now we're getting another one, hopefully sooner rather than later, into the Nintendo Switch 2 life cycle. Now this next one, this last story we got, this is a doozy. This is rumors. Uh, I want to stress this is a rumor. I've never reported anything from this source. This person has apparently been vetted. I don't know. We're going to keep the truckload of salt, but we have some Nintendo Switch 2 information as well as information from Sega and Square Enix. This is a lot of stuff happening and it happened all over on the gaming and rumors leaks reddit so this leak from the gaming leaks and rumors reddit came from i'm a hero 2 who has apparently been verified by moderators it contains a lot of juicy stuff on sega switch 2 and square enix now we're actually just going to focus on the things related to nintendo and as always we have to take this as a rumor and not facts until proven otherwise so here's what he had to say on sega another sonic game is coming next year along with jet set comics zone and a new guardian heroes Persona 6 is actually further away than many people anticipated, and it's probably not going to be coming out in 2024. There is also a Persona Party game in the works. Now, on Switch 2 dev kits, at least from the Sega side of things, Sega has actually had them for quite some time, as compared to the reports that came out in July. It is backwards compatible, and it was verified with a few current Nintendo Switch games tested. There is a new cartridge for Switch 2 games, and it has a new camera feature. Don't worry, folks. We have more Switch 2 information here in a moment, because he also has some details from Square Enix. Now... Square Enix stuff was mostly focused on Final Fantasy stuff, so a lot of it not necessarily applicable to Nintendo Switch. But I do want to note one thing. He does say that Square Enix has PlayStation 5 dev kits, like brand new ones, and he's pretty sure that's for the Pro next year. That wouldn't really be too surprising. Square Enix is a big partner with Sony. But this is the Final Fantasy nugget that I am most excited about. Final Fantasy VII Remake looks and runs like a PlayStation 5 game on the Switch 2 dev kit. The port took barely any time to function well. It could be a launch game. <sighs> I mean, I, I know, Final Fantasy VII Remake coming to Switch at launch? Oh, baby, you want to talk about a showcase? And that would mean we were going to get the next one, right? That's also coming. Oh, man. Oh, say this ain't so. Say it ain't so. You can't, you can't do this to me. You can't, you can't do this to me. This is why we got to remember. We need to keep our skepticism goggles on. We need to keep them on. Maybe out of focus them a little bit. Maybe squint and make things a bit blurry. I'm just saying, I've never reported on anything from this person. Vetted or not, they're not vetted by me. So, I don't know, but it's pretty crazy. And all we can do is hope for the best because that is a very good sign for Switch 2 if this game just ran like that. Comparable to PS5. Woo! All right, and that's going to do it for today. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljantz from Nintendo Prime. And folks, I'm going to see you real, real soon on the live reaction to Nintendo Treehouse Live for Mario Wonder. Catch you guys in that next video if you don't happen to be there. <laughs>